First and foremost, the nano world is a number. Nought point nought 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 one meters. The nanometer is the size of the nano world. It's roughly the same scale as atoms, and it's the size of nanotechnologies. Not easy to apprehend. It's small, very small, over 50,000 times smaller than a hair. Let's begin with a bit of history. One of the first windows into the nano world was opened by Richard Feynman in 1959. This brilliant and jovial scientist, a former member of the American Atomic Bomb Program, Manhattan, and future Nobel Physics Prize winner in 1963, gave a conference with the mysterious title, There's a Lot of Space Underneath. He developed his theory on nanosciences, according to which it would one day be possible to organize atoms like bricks, which would enable us, as he said, to write an encyclopedia on a pinhead. The problem was, back in 1959, he didn't yet have the tools to achieve his vision. So what are the probable applications for nanobiotechnologies? In reality, they are countless, as much from a diagnostic as from a therapeutic point of view. But some of them, like the vectorization of medicines, are very representative of the potential. Basically, it's a relatively simple lock and key principle. The first stage involves locking a drug inside a nano object. Next, the outer layer of the object is functionalized chemically. Thanks to this key, the nano object is able to recognize the cell that is equipped with the right lock to latch onto it and release its drug. This still experimental technique could play an important role in medicine in the future, particularly for the treatment of cancer. Mrs. Souterrand wants me to see the poster showing all of the research projects being carried out in this building.